Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about annotations. And we're going to split this up into two parts. Part one is going to be all about highlighting and markups. And part two is going to be into making notes, using notes, uh, bringing or importing images, and the annotations uh, drop-down, which gives you the ability to use stamps and labels. Well, welcome back to the channel for part two of our annotation series in Plants with Basics. In part one, uh, if you haven't viewed it, I'd recommend going back and looking at that first. We went over uh, highlighting and markups and how the markup color selection works with both of those. So in this session, uh, this is mostly about notes, but we are going to go in and show you how to import images and to use the annotations, uh, it seems like duplicate, but they actually have an annotations button here, which uh, brings up stamps and labels and things of that uh, nature, things that they pre-made, things that you can make yourself, and how you can do kind of like a one-stop button for uh, adding content to your plan. We're going to get in that last, but first, notes. Uh, I use notes a lot, and it's really easy once you understand what the purpose of it is. Whether you're wanting to make a label or make a note to yourself or a note to your client, uh, where you're adding something, text to the screen, it's basically adding a text box to the screen. So it's real straightforward. Uh, anywhere in the plan, on any plan, um, if it is not scaled, you may find that uh, it doesn't show up properly when you try to add a book. So, Always add a note with a properly scaled drawing, and then it should you should see it after you've created it. If you don't see it, check to see if you've done a scale on the drawing. If it's unscaled, scale the drawing, and chances are it'll show up then. So uh, our drawing is scaled. We have several highlights on here, so we're going to make a note about something. And my it's going to be a note to myself that these footings here exist outside of the slab plan, I'm actually going to have to demo on this side of the wall so they can put in that footing. So I'm going to make a note to myself. I click on note and just anywhere I want to make it, you're, you're basically dragging a box. You're making a text box. So I start on the upper left and its default is yellow, but you can change that after the fact. It then brings up a dialog box. And I'm going to say and I like to cap, cap. I like to type in caps just so I can read it better on on the plans. So I'm going to say uh, demo slab like a type left side of wall. Now I could make a whole paragraph if I wanted to. Uh, the text size and the color uh, really doesn't matter a whole lot. Unless you don't, unless you want to increase the size of it, I'm always clicking on auto size, and for the most part, I see it before I get out of the box. Whether that is too big or too small. Now, depend on your scale you've set, it could be too big. So I go to text size and think of it this way: Well, what's less than one? Zero? No, you couldn't put zero, but I can put zero point five. Hit enter. That looks good and okay. It's just that simple. I now, kind of like a highlight or an arrow or another markup, I can move that around wherever I want to. If I right click on it, go into properties, I now I see that dialog box again. I can change the color if I want to. I could change it to a light blue and I could change the uh, text to a white. I mean, you're not limited at all with making these text boxes or notes anything you want. So on top of that, you might remember in the last session we had markups. I'm going to take a mark. I'm going to get an arrow here. And I'm going to remember the base of the arrows is your first click. And I'm going to go and I'm going to point right to where I want that note to be. So now I've done a full annotation. I've made a note and I pointed to where that note belongs, just like a markup you'd get from an architect or engineer. I'm good to go. It's that simple. 
So notes can be really great, but there's another cool feature about notes that you may not know if you've not been using plans with a lot of time. You can find them in a large set of plans. We haven't really talked about it not much. In our left navigation window, we've just been dealing with the pages and bookmark. Pages being this upper window, bookmarks being the lower, and I won't go into all that again. But down at the bottom, there are two features that we've not used yet. Attachments and notes. Now, I don't have any attachments. If I click on attachments, you see in the navigation pane, there's nothing there. Nothing for me to search on. If I had attachments, Excel attachments or other attachments I bring into it, then I could, you would see them there and I could search for them. Let's go down to notes. Look at that. I've got two notes and it tells me where those notes are. If I go up to the top here and I click on the first one, in this little window below it, it says the world it says the word auto scaled. That's a note that I made for myself, basically meaning that there wasn't a scale and I had to make a scale. I call it auto scaled. You could call it whatever you want to. Here's the note we just created. Demo slab left side of wall. It tells me it's a new note and it's on page S200, page I'm on. So let's say you get you make several notes later on and you know you made a note about whatever. Well, you've got 150 drawings loaded in plans with. How do you find that note? You go to this notes window in your left side navigation and it, you may have, it may be on your right side depending how you configured uh, plan set, but you're going to have a notes window in one of the navigation boxes. Find that window and you can find every note you've created. Now, that doesn't work for highlights, it doesn't work for markups, but notes it works for. So that's a quick, quick way to find a note that you didn't know where you put it. So we'll just get back out of that by clicking on page bookmarks and our navigation pane goes back to normal. So that's pretty much the 511, 411, whatever 11 you want to call about notes. I use them all the time. Uh, I'll make a note about something and that note is good on other pages, so I'll copy it and go to the other page and paste, 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 paste. Uh, make my arrows if I need a point to something. Change the colors if I need it. Change the size of the text if I need it. Really simple to use. I totally recommend you get into marking up your drawings before you do the takeoff like I do. And, and getting set so you've got all the information. When you go back in and you're focused on doing a takeoff, you've got information that you put to yourself, reminders to yourself uh, on those plans. You can always hide them from your client. You can always hide them from the printouts. So that pretty much covers it in notes. Let's say we've got a picture of this area that we want to, when we did a job walk, that we want to insert in as a reminder to us what that looked like. Or let's say you're a door manufacturer. We know they're putting in new doors here and you want to put a picture of that door in here because you're going to show that. You're going to copy this. You're going to capture the screen and you're going to put this in your proposal. So how hard is it, how hard is it to insert an image in the plans with? It's not. Watch what I do. We're going to go up and in our annotations group, we're going to click on image. Now I can tell you that wherever it pops up is wherever plants it remembers where you where you go and get things from. There are several pop-up windows that, that plants with does that with. And this is one of them. I'm in my training directory that I created for these sessions. And so I've got a couple of uh, JPEGs in here. I'm going to take this this one here and you see a preview on the screen. This is actually a job I did, Pont City Market uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And once I click on that, I, I see that's the right one. I click open. It asks me to place it. And just kind of like the other ones, think of it, think of placing the top left corner first, click once, and then just you don't have to hold down the mouse button. Just draw to the size you want to. Click again, 
And even though plants will tell you to click the next point, it's wrong. Hit escape and it'll stop. And it'll move it. It's 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 a feature they need to probably improve upon. But like a lot of things in plans, but it creates boxes for you to resize things. Now if you if you click one of the corners, it's going to resize properly. If you click one of the other ones, it's going to change the size of the box. So just play around with that. Just remember if you want to resize the size of the picture, pick one of the four corners. So I'm picking that corner here and I'm going to put it there. And it does, it's not transparent transparent like other uh, like markups or highlights can be. So it will cover up anything you're putting it over. So just keep that in mind. But I now can then take my arrow like I was doing before and I can start there and I can say well that picture is for that area right there. Now actually it's not. This is not Pond City Market but you get the idea. You could use it. You could put in pictures and you could pretty much um, display them however you want to. Size them. Uh, just keep in mind if, you, if you've got a picture that you came off your phone and you size it too big, the pixels may not show up real well. So I try to keep pictures of, you know, fairly small in an insert if I'm, if I'm doing that. And I could put as many pictures on here as it, it would fit on the plan. So it's that simple. You don't want the picture, click on it so it's highlighted, hit delete, gone. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Remember one thing that Planswood does pretty good? And if you've got one thing that you messed up, meaning you need to go back one, <laughs> one mistake, is the undo. And it's back. So, undo doesn't always work for multiple mistakes, but most times it'll work for a single mistake. All right, that's uh, that's how you insert an image. It's, it doesn't get any more complex than that. The last thing we're going to talk about is annotations. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on that because there's pre-made annotations that plans with tabs, and they really want you to make your own. I, I, I truly believe they do. So if you click down on that, you get three items. Uh, revision clouds, and you configure your own revision clouds, or use the one they've made to give you one. And it's for like revision clouds that you get in addenda on plans. The idea is to make a cloud and it wants you to draw a box really, some kind of box. And you, as you're drawing this box, you see it makes a cloud. And when you're done, hit escape and you got a revision cloud. You now could then make a note and make a note about what this revision cloud means. You could use other markups to it, explain what it is but it's a revision cloud. You can move it just like you can any other markup or annotation in PlanSwift. You can change the color on it if you want to. Go into Properties, change the color. It's that simple. So let's go to the other, the rubber stamps. So I've created several stamps that I'll put in, in the uh, notation area of the drawing. So for example, if I was saying that this was a uh, um, I saw this was a revised drawing. I might go, and I'm, oh, I lost it. I might go over here and put revised. Now, my stamps also has a time and date on it, which you can put into your own stamp. So when you put a stamp on there, it actually shows uh, a time and a date. Let's see, I think if this was, yeah, show time stamp. So now this is showing a time and a date. So you can create stamps for anything you want to. You can copy them. You can reuse them. You can't really resize them much, but you can change the colors and the box uh, and the backgrounds and so forth like that. So think of rubber stamps as just being that. You're creating your own rubber stamps, and you can configure them right here, or you can change one of the existing ones. Sticky tabs. Same kind of thing, <laughs> they're all marked urgent, which I thought was kind of interesting. But if I use a sticky tab, it's kind of like a label and an arrow all in one. So I go to where I want the sticky tab to be, and I want the point of the arrow I'm starting first. So I'll go in and say, oh, I want to point to this thing right here. 
this revision cloud. So the method with this is a little different. You click and you hold it down and you drag. So I'm going to make a left click and I'm going to hold it down and drag it to however long I want it. And once I let go of it, it's done. I'm out of it. It's already stopped digitizing. It's not going to ask me to do another one. It's a one, one stop, kind of like the stamps are. So there again, I can, uh, if I want to change any properties of it, I go into the properties and I can change the colors, the labels, I can make stored notes, and I can, I can change it from urgent to whatever I want it to be. And once I create those, they're in that library so I can use them over and over again. So think of the uh, think of rubber stamps and sticky tabs as being things you can create that we use quite often and you can put in there as an annotation. So that's pretty much it of part two with annotations. Um, it's really about how you mark up your drawings and what you're doing with these drawings. So uh, have fun with that, and we'll see you next time.